Do you still remember this map that we mentioned a few videos ago? So in the previous video, when we cover the basics of list view, we covered the view, which is the UI, and the state, which is the data, and also how we map the state to the view, right? which is a basic data binding that we covered in the previous video. In this video, we are going to cover basic events for list view so that we can actually do something with the list view. Let's come to our solution and let's go to the context page. When you have a phone that has a list, you usually use a finger to tap on the item of a list. So there are a couple of events that we are interested in. Right, one of them is called item selected. Okay, so let's actually try to handle that event and see what happens. All right, so this generated a new event handler, which automatically showed up here. Let's actually set a breakpoint and run our application and see whether it's triggered or not. Okay, so I'm going to run the application. Okay, so I'm going to click on one of the item and you can see that it's triggered this breakpoint. Right, so let's continue. And if I click on the next item, it triggered the breakpoint again. So we're gonna continue. But this time, we're going to click on the same item so I clicked on it, so I'm going to click down a few times. You can see that this breakpoint is not being triggered. So what does that mean? It means that this event handler, item selected, is only triggered when the item selection has changed, right? At the beginning, there's nothing selected. So you click, if you click on any item, the selection changed from nothing to one of the item, right? The item that you clicked on. And then when you click on something else, another item, then of course it's gonna trigger the event. But if you click on the same item, it's not going to trigger the event, right? So if you are going to use this event handler to do things, then you have to face this problem. So there are a couple of ways to fix this problem. One of the ways is to deselect the selected item right inside this event. We can just use list contact dot selected item. So we can set it to now. So basically you do your logic here, right? Your own logic. And then at the end, you can uh, deselect it. Okay, so let's run the application again and to see the behavior. So now if I click on item, well, you can see that the event is triggered, right? And if I run the application again, you now notice that the item is not being selected, right? Because we deselected it again. So this event is gonna happen over and over again just because we deselected the item. One thing we can use to test the application to, is to use the built-in display alert. Right, so we can display a message. So this is going to be, for example, test. And then the message is test and cancel is, let's just say, okay. Right, and we run the application again. Now we don't have the breakpoint, uh, but we have the message. You can see the message and we click on the okay button. The message disappears. And I can click on the same item and trigger the alert. Let's take a look at another event. Let's go to the XAML file. And another one is called item tapped. Right, so let's create a new event handler. And then let's go to the code behind again. You can see a new event handler is generated. So again, let's set some breakpoint. And then let's run the application again to see the behavior, to see whether there are any differences between the two. Okay, so the application runs, and we click on the item. You can see the first event is triggered is the item selected. And then if we continue, then the second event is triggered again. All right, so this item tab is triggered afterwards. Uh, one of the more reliable way to deselect item is to actually do the deselection inside here, inside the tap event. Right, we're gonna do it here. 
and then you handle your logic inside the item selected. Why is that? Why is that? It's because this item tap event is always happening, right? Whether you're selecting an item or not selecting an item, whether you tap on the same items or tap on a different item, right? Therefore, um, the this event is triggered way more times than the item selected event, right? So to handle your logic, you don't want to put your logic inside here. If user use their fingers to tap on the item like very, very quickly, this event handler is going to be triggered many, many times, right? Where this one is triggered less. So therefore, uh, we want to do our deselection here and we want to do our logic here because you don't want your logic to run inside here because it's going to run for many, many times, right? So this is a more reliable way to put our deselection over here and putting our logic inside item selected is better. So to give it a test, make sure that it actually works. Uh, we can put our display alert inside here. Okay, so we're going to do test and then I'm going to say OK. And we're going to run the application again. So I'm going to click on an item. And we see this alert. Click on OK. Click on another one. We see the alert. And you can see that the deselection is happening, right? Nothing is being selected. So this is the exact behavior we are expecting. Here you will notice there is actually a bug. I think it's a bug for uh, item selection, right? For this item selected event. This event is going to be triggered twice if we use, uh, we try to deselect, right? So let's take a look at the behavior. I click on this and then we have actually let's disable let's remove the breakpoint so i click on that already and then now i click on the ok button but you see that i clicked on the ok button already but this alert dialog is not disappearing i have to click on the ok button again right so it appears that i click on the same button again but it's not the case it's actually what uh, what's actually happening is that this event handler is triggered twice. So let's put the breakpoint back again. Okay. And then let's click on any of the item and run it again. And you see that it happens twice. Right. So now there's actually two dialogues. That's why we need to click on twice. Um I think the logic here is that this is, this shouldn't be called item selected. It should be called unchanged, right? Item selection changed. What is happening is that first time you click on the item, the selection, the item selected changed from now to something. And then because we deselected here, so the item selected is changed from something to no. And that triggers the event again, right? So I think it's a bug, but uh, we always have a, a workaround. To solve this problem, uh, we can just say if list contacts dot selected is not now, and, and then we put our logic inside here, right? So our logic should be inside here. We only deal with anything if there is actually a selected item. Right? If there's no selected item, we don't need to do anything. So if we run the application again, now you should see that the, the alert only triggered once. So let's run the application. Okay, so let's try that. Click on this. We have this alert. Click on OK button. It disappears right away. Right. So our workaround works. So now let's actually put our logic here. So what do we want to do? We want to, when we click on a contact, we want to go to that contact, right? So, uh, which means that we want to go to the added contact page. So for that, if you remember, our logic is to use shell.current.go to async. 
we can directly call it this way or we can use a wait and async and then we can go to the page so for that uh, we're going to say add it contact page and then later probably in the next video uh, we're going to talk about how to pass information when we navigate to another page today we're just going to navigate to the page because we mainly want to focus on the event handling of the list view okay so let's click on any of the item and we're looking at the edit contact page click on cancel button going back click on it again going to edit contact page okay so that's everything i want to cover in this video i'll see you in the next one